Bonjour, and welcome to the show, World War II Books, Where to Start. I'm your host, Wild Bill Donovan, head of the OSS, and today we're going to do some spying in France. I haven't touched on espionage yet uh, for a World War II topic. There are uh, approximately two metric shit tons of books about spies and espionage. Most of them centering on the European theater, although there's you know, a lot of stuff with Japanese code breaking in the Pacific also. But today we're going to indulge the European theater. I've got three books for you, and I hope you find something you'd like to, to read here. Let's start off with Codename Lease by Larry Loftus. Oh, pretty easy on the letter there. From 2019, and 280 pages, main body text. And this is the story of Odette Hallows and Peter Churchill. And uh, their, tri their trials and travails in France. Odette Hallows was born French. Her family moved to England sometime in, in the interwar period. And she volunteered for uh, some kind of military service just to help the war effort out. Didn't really know what she wanted to do, just wanted to be part of the effort. Even though she had three young children and her husband was a British officer in the army and away on duty. But she volunteered and uh, they, the uh, SOE, Department F, I think it was called, Special Operations Executive, took her in and recruited her and trained her. And she, they even gave her the option. said, you know, you got three young kids, you don't have to do this. But she said, no, I, I want to do my part. Because she spoke perfect French and she was a native, she knew the country, it's a perfect fit. Even though uh, SOE had grave misgivings about sending women into France, they also knew it might be a, a, a slightly better option, being that it wouldn't be scrutinized as much by Gestapo and Vichy French police. So away she goes. Um, via the Med, she has to go through Gibraltar and dropped into France on a uh, Faluca with some other operatives. So uh, you, know, you got to get in any way you can and she uh, operates in the south of France for a while. Uh, this is extremely uh, really intriguing stuff. The unfortunate aspect is Larry Loftus chose to this as a love story and he warns you right up front. He gives it away. He says I really got on uh, onto this material when I discovered there was a love story involved between Odette Hallows and Churchill. And framing it as such, instead of a straight-up espionage-related uh, tale from the war, cripples this book entirely. Uh, he tells it in a very wannabe novelist style, with some sensationalistic stuff, uh, tabloid-style writing bunched up together. And the result is uh, frustrating, very frustrating to uh, to to plow through. I will say the afterword, the appendix, he reverts to a normal adult and writes as an adult for an adult audience and it's so much better. If he had just adopted that tone throughout the entire book, it'd be four or five stars. As is, not so much. Uh, Dead Hallows goes through hell and high water. Uh, you know, 36 uh, female agents that were inserted into France during the war, 19 were killed. So she was lucky to have survived. She did, uh, she did get her network rolled up and tortured by the Gestapo and sent to uh, Robinsbrook coming back into play again eventually. So she went through hell and high water uh, to, to do her bit, supposedly never gave away any information. You know, the, the, I guess the MO for the Gestapo was torture while in France. If you don't give anything up or you give up minimal information, uh, throw you in a concentration camp in Germany or shoot you outright. It was, there was really no one solid method that they adopted every time. Uh, it's just kind of haphazard way they uh, chose to keep you, starve you, kill you, torture you, whatever. Um, but she really went through the ringer. And at the end of uh, at the end of the war, when Robin's book is uh, is liberated, Fritz Sören supposedly takes her along as a hostage to help uh, his bargaining position when he turns himself in. Now I have to go back and look at the Sarah Helm book again to see how much this corresponds with reality because I've got questions with Larry Loft, as I said, and I'll give you a prime example of this in a minute. So Fritz Sören supposedly wants to negotiate with the Western Allies to turn himself in, so he doesn't get you know yanked to the to the Russians and we're straight bolt to the head. There's a weird sequence where the, I think he surrenders to Canadians, and they're like, "Well, whatever, dude, you either surrender or not, but you know, leave the girl here and whatever." And she supposedly spends a night outdoors, savoring her freedom in the dark woods in a war-torn area, and I'm kind of left wondering if that really happened. But anyway, um, the the aforementioned incident. Uh, Churchill is extracted and reinserted into France by parachute at one point, and Odette's team is 
designated to go uh, find him when he, his parachute drops. So, so they set up a, a kind of like a flare or a you know torch or a campfire kind of thing on the top of a snowy mountain that the RF supposedly can drop Churchill onto, like a, you know, like a uh, pin on a map. And he comes floating down out of this winter sky into this uh, brightly, lit, brightly lit zone on top of this mountain. And the wind gusts just perfectly so that instead of a normal hard landing and tuck and roll, he's dropped gently like an angel directly into her arms. Oh, it's so cute, so poignant, and so much bullshit. If you believe that, you'll believe anything. And that's what it, just the prime example of the romance and the love story overshadows the reality. So, ends up being two stars. Uh, it could have been so much better. Well, that's uh, Codename Lease by Larry Loftus. And then on to A Woman of No Importance by Sonia Purnell. I don't have a hard copy with me. Also 2019, 352 pages total. This is going to chronicle an American. While on assignment in Turkey, goes hunting one day for, for birds, and she accidentally shoots herself in the foot, which eventually has to be amputated with a good chunk of her leg. So that kind of ruins her prospects with the State Department. Being a woman and, you know, in the terminology of the time, a cripple, it was a no-go. So she kind of wanders around France for a while after leaving the State Department and um, ends up being an ambulance driver for the French Army, which is a, a not a safe job in the spring of 40. But from there, she gets extracted to England and volunteers to serve with the British Army, and they end up throwing her into the espionage stuff because she knows Europe. She's fluent in five or six languages, and she's adamant she can do a, a whole lot of good. So... This is really, really intense stuff. When she gets inserted in southern France around Lyon, um, she really lives the, the life um, having to try to coordinate the drops of other agents being inserted, trying to keep everyone from being caught, building her own network, convincing Frenchmen to resist despite the risk, and not getting caught herself. Uh, she was able to do this with a cover of being a reporter for the New York Times. Um, before the entry of the Americans to the war in the Vichy, in the Vichy French portion of France, she was able to, uh, you know, wander around as an American, albeit under restrictions and all, you know, subject to search and seizure, yada yada yada. But I, she also has uh, Peter Churchill as one of her uh, contacts, and she schools him on his first insertion to France of all the things he's doing wrong, giving him away as English, it's small things like don't put your hands in your pockets. Frenchmen don't do that. That's an English gentleman thing. Watch the way you cross the street. They drive on the other side of the street here. You're looking the wrong way when you step into the street. Don't order booze on uh, certain days in cafes because the fishy French only limited to every other day. Be careful of everything you do. Uh, don't offer cigarettes around. That, those, that's a prized commodity. You should be picking uh, almost completely smoked butts out of the street and, 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 and smoking those yourselves. That kind of stuff. The small minutia of spycraft. That is really good detail, and this must have been intense pressure. She gets all she gets the uh, benzodrine pills that all spies were given, so she's constantly uh, popping pills to stay awake and stay alert. And she da she dances the dance for a, a long time, but she eventually trusts the wrong person, a certain father Alesh, who was a stooge for the Gestapo. He's Belgian, I think, posing as a uh, priest in the Alsace Lorraine region and preaching anti-Nazi sermons to sell himself to her, and he's the one that trips her up, and we even get Klaus Barbie in on the hunt, although he never makes a, an appearance front and center, he is mentioned as hunting her, so she has to hike it out of the uh, Vichy French zone on foot over the Pyrenees to Spain, and man, that must have sucked, and she comes back in 44 for the D-Day build-up, building a new network in a different part of France, and that the second half of the book is not as uh, compelling as the first half, it really isn't. Um, it's solid, but not nearly as compelling. And if I got any criticism of this one, it's that Sonia Purnell is, I think, guilty a little bit of presentism as far as women's roles in uh, the 1940s and the expectations of society to have treated them better. That's a today view, not a 1940s view. 
well, the way women thought of themselves in the 1940s and the way society treated them and their gender roles at the time, it's just not how we conceptualize it today. It, it, we all, these authors want to say, it should have been better, they should have done more, they should have treated her better. No, that's not how it was. That's not how it played out. Maybe your fantasy of how it should have played out, but it didn't. Uh, the great strength here is that she does carry on through the rest of Virginia Hall's life uh, to her time in the CIA. And the, 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 the trials and frustrations of being a, um, a high-level CIA agent and uh, administrative person, being a pioneer, groundbreaking woman in the post-war era, and the professional jealousies that arose because she was one of the most experienced agents, field agents, and had that glory of World War II behind her, but the men are trying to climb the career ladder, or she's trying to build an effective spy agency, and all the all the uh, inter-office politics involved in that. So it's not a completely happy ending at all, by any means. Uh, but she did, did live a good long life. I think she passed away in 86 or 82, somewhere around there. Uh, probably not uh, the, the, the fairy tale ending she wanted, uh, but she did, you know, she did a hell of a lot. Uh, considering all the uh, handicaps she had in life. She was awarded a DSC that she did not want to accept and did not go to the White House to take. She was like, no, I, I, I don't, I don't see, see any need for medals. She was also awarded a crawl to care by France. Pretty impressive woman. So that's A Woman of No Importance by Sonia Purnell. Finish up today with Agent Zigzag by Ben McIntyre from back in ooh, 2007. It's an oldie. Uh, 364 pages total. Ben McIntyre has made his entire career off espionage writing in England. He just kind of broadened out recently with a book on the SAS, which I read and I was like, boy, not so good. Is it one mistake? Uh, but the TV series Rogue Heroes is supposedly really good. I haven't watched it yet. But Ben McIntyre is all about espionage all the time. And he uh, and Asia Zigzag is going to take the double cross system where England turned German double agents back on them. Or German agents turned them into double agents back into France uh, to uh, feed them false information. And this guy's real name was um, Eddie Chapman, a petty criminal, a con artist, a jail, uh, a, a uh, lock picker, you name it, uh, a, a, a ne'er do well. Low life. He, uh, we opened the book with him being arrested on the Isle of Jersey as he's winding and dining a girlfriend. And he pops out the window of this restaurant and runs away into the night. Of course, it's an island and he can't go very far. But that's a great opening. Very reminiscent of a James Bond teaser. And the Germans find him in jail when they occupy the Isle of Jersey. And they decide to try to recruit him after he does the obligatory time that uh, Paris jail they recruit him to be reinserted in England and this is fantastic because their method of insertion is a little bit rougher than English methods they put him in a Heinkel bomber with a parachute and have him just drop right out of the bomb bay into the English countryside <laughs> can you imagine trying to that's ballsy can you imagine doing that so he lands in this farmer's field marches right up to the door announces himself call the police I've been sent here by the Germans that's a hell of a start and so the, the English, knowing what they've got and are worried about him and his uh, past, they, they saw him as name of Zigzag because they're never quite sure which way he's going to turn. But over the next couple of years, he does great service uh, deceiving the Germans and feeding good information to the British. Fantastic story. And you know, he becomes a, a kind of an international playboy after the war, gets rich off the uh, whole affair. And he's in and out of trouble with tax. Uh, business and and whatnot, some you know some some fraudulent schemes later in his life. Good stuff. Um, this this is a hoop to read, and you know Ben McIntyre never gives you that sense of of, of BS uh, alerts. Never. He, he's really solid with his research. He has uh, made quite a quite a living off uh, research in my five files. It's very good. I, I'll have more Ben McIntyre books in the future. This guy's solid all the way. It's definitely five stars. So that wraps up for today for our first delve into espionage in occupied France. Um, we've got codename Lise and Woman of No Importance and Agent Zigzag. Hope you found something there that piques your interest. And we'll do it again sometimes. This is Wild Bill signing off. I've got some ciphers to, to uh, send off to occupied France. Until next time, happy reading.